Dr. Patil, very nice to meet you. Very nice to have you um, and have a chance to learn more about you today. Thanks for having me. So Dr. Patil, I, I, um, uh, I, I get to work a bit with some of the folks in pediatric ophthalmology that, that you know, um, uh, you know, you're, um, this is the first time we're getting to learn a little bit more about some of the work that you're doing. So I'm excited to, to, to learn more myself. You know, all of our faculty, it's impressive um, how they, how all of you come from many, you know, different backgrounds, a lot of education, of course, everybody knows that you need a lot of education to do what you're doing, but you work with patients who are uh, young patients, pediatric patients, um, but you also specialize in neuro-ophthalmology, so the conditions that affect the back of the eye and the, the, the connection between the eye and the brain. So, um, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what are the things that led you or inspired you, I guess, to, uh, to, to move this direction and in, in focus this for your career? Um, so I'll just, uh, I'll just start with uh, the fact that I, I grew up in India um, and I did most of my education in India. Um, I come from a family of physicians. My uh, great grandfather was a physician in uh, and he was an ophthalmologist. Um, and then so was my grandmother and my aunt. And it's, it just, it felt like I had role models, but I wanted to follow in their footsteps and then take that one step ahead. Um, so that's why you don't want to be a, just a, another ophthalmologist. You wanted to do something else. So that's what, and, and I love kids. I love working with kids. So that's what led me to pediatric ophthalmology. And then during the course of my fellowship and when I was looking at all the conditions that would present, uh, neuro-ophthalmology seemed very interesting. It's, it's another subset in ophthalmology. Um, it's not very common, at least in India, for physicians to want to specialize in neuro-ophthalmology. There are more questions than there are answers really uh, in yeah. that field. So. Uh, but that's what intrigued me. And I felt like that's something, uh, if I could combine the two, work with kids and then work with neuroophthalmology, which is trying to understand the eye and the brain, uh, that that would truly be something that I would want to do for the rest of my life because it's interesting. It's extremely interesting. Well, it's amazing that you're third generation um, in ophthalmology. And it's interesting as well that, you know, it, it really became a one-upmanship. <laughs> you wanted to keep taking it a little further. And uh, well, and that's exciting. And, and you're right, there are more questions and answers in neuro-ophthalmology. And I imagine for, for kids, it's even more so. Um, tell us a little bit about that as it relates to your field, your specialty, and, and some of the areas maybe that you are real interested in that, um, that or, or maybe some problems that we're trying to solve for people who, um, who need your care. Um, so I've at children's, um, I think we're in a very unique position, a very advantageous position. It's, it's a great children's hospital. It's one of the top 10 in the country. So we get to work as a team with neurologists, neuroradiologists, neurosurgeons, and then as part of the team as, as being the, ophthal you know, the ophthalmologist that deals with these um, kids. So you see children with complex visual deficits related to neurological issues, degenerative issues, brain tumors, strokes, um, and um, that's really the sort of uh, patients we're seeing now. A couple of areas that, that um, ha, um, I'm trying to focus on and that are extremely interesting. Uh, one large one is cortical visual impairment. So that, um, to explain simply, is basically when there is vision deficit or a loss of vision in a child but it's not related to the eye itself. So the eye structurally is doing fine. So for example, the child doesn't need glasses, the eye is fine, but the child can't see. And by can't see, I mean, it can be a wide spectrum. It could be someone who's mildly deficient in vision to someone who's legally blind, but can't see because of issues in the brain and how the eye functions with the brain. Um, there's still not much known about this condition, but it is largely becoming um, uh, a significant cause for visual impairment in children. Uh, so we are trying to set up uh, at CHP uh, a, a cortical visual impairment clinic or a CVI clinic, where it's a multidisciplinary clinic where you would have an ophthalmologist, we would have someone doing functional vision assessment to see, because a, a lot of these children have 
um, other complex diseases and are unable to do the standard tests. So for example, they won't be able to read from a chart to tell you how much they can see. So we're, we're using other methods to find out um, their true vision potential to see how we can help them. We're trying to get electrophysiology testing where Dr. Lias is our electrophysiology chief there, uh, who's brilliant at this to see how uh, we can actually use these objective tests to determine their visual potential and see how we can uh, take that forward. So that's something I'm truly um, excited about. So that's one um, uh, disease that we're trying to look at and see if we can find answers. It's an interesting topic. I, I know that that is also something that actually we're supporting through the Eye and Ear Foundation. We uh, yeah. were fortunate to get a gift uh, from the Jack Buncher Foundation that's focused specifically in this area. And I know that you're working with Dr. Um, Leasis on that, that project, but- um, And Dr. Nish. Yes. And Dr. Nishal, sure. And, and you know, but it, it, yeah, you're right. More questions and answers, right? And there's there's really a lot that we want to explore there. And, and, and I understand the numbers are quite large uh, in terms of kids that actually may fit that category um, as we learn more about it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times it's just, um, it's children who just thought to have, you know, reading issues or just not doing well at school and nobody knows why. And then when you delve deeper, you realize it's just a form of cortical visual impairment, which was never discovered. So yeah, that's, it's, it's very interesting. It's a huge spectrum, uh, very different, uh, sort of presentations. So that's one. Mm. Um, there are some other diseases. Another one that's uh, it's pretty common in the, in the population here, and I see it more uh, in my practice here in the United States than I had in children in India, uh, is called um, idiopathic intracranial hypertension, or IIH is, mm. is, is a common term. It basically is when the pressure in the head is higher than it should be. Um, and it's not secondary to having a brain tumor or meningitis or something else that's causing that pressure to go up. That's why it's called idiopathic because we don't know why it happens. No, no, yeah. Yeah, so we have certain risk factors identified. It's been studied and we have more information in adults, although we still don't have definitive answers. Uh, but in children, um, not too much is, is known. We know how to treat it. We, we give medication, we follow them. Uh, but we're trying to see if we can um, find out what the markers are to see why someone does well with the same medication, why someone else doesn't, uh, why someone recurs after you stop their treatment and then someone else doesn't. Uh, so things like that within that uh, subset of, uh, of patients. And we work closely with the neurology team here because uh, it's essentially a team management. And we have um, one of our pediatric neurologists, uh, Dr. Catalina Cleves, uh, who also works with us and we run a common clinic, uh, Dr. Mitchell, Dr. Clevis and I, and that's something uh, also that I think is, is, is very interesting. And we're trying to look at um, research questions in that field. Well, you know, it, it's, it, it's really a lot going on. Um, and, you know, I, I, it's, it's always impressive to meet our faculty like this. I'm really glad we're actually doing these interviews because it's, it's really given me an opportunity to, to uh, meet all of you and, and have these conversations with you, which we don't often get to do. But but um, it's also, you know, impressive how uh, how much you have going on, um, and you know, you're in the we'll we'll call it the 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 first quarter <laughs> of your career, <laughs> you know, you're, um, and and I think that that you know it's impressive that you've done so much. If you were to identify something that you know um, that you've been able to do or been able to be part of that that you're, you're really proud of, that you would speak to, um, what, would, what would something like that be? So back home in India, we, we worked, um, I, I worked at uh, one of the largest referral hospitals and I think we had huge numbers in patient care. So the idea again was to develop the specialty. So I was trying to, to make this a niche, to make pediatric neuroophthalmology even be recognized, because a lot of people don't even know it, it exists as a specialty. Um, so I think that's what we, we did end up setting up a neuroophthalmology clinic. Um, we have some work done in cortical visual impairment from, uh, from the Institute. Um, some papers that came through looking at um, other neuroophthalmology diseases like myasthenia. Uh, so I would say that uh, just because the specialty wasn't, is not truly recognized in India and I was trying to get it the place or the uh, place in the spotlight it, it deserves honestly. 
That's fantastic. You know, it, it you know, I, I, um, I, I imagine for you, you know, coming, you know, here to Pittsburgh and, and having an opportunity to work with, um, you know, a Jose Sahel and a Ken Nichelle. Ken Nichelle is, these are two world renowned um, individuals in their fields. Um, are, are, is that the reason you came to Pittsburgh or, or what led you here to, uh, uh, to kind of pursue your, your interest here? So you're, you're, you're very right. Um, after working for, for seven or eight years as an attending, um, when you've done a lot of clinical work, some research work, you, you are looking for the next step to sort of take your ideas ahead. Um, and then when you look at a place like this, where you know that the leaders, uh, the very two people you mentioned, Dr. Sahel, who leads uh, ophthalmology and then our pediatric ophthalmology chief, Dr. Nishal, are both um, individuals who have, who are, who are not only great clinicians, uh, but who have very strong research interests, who want to ask those questions, who want people around them to pursue those questions, um, who want you to really to go the next mile. Uh, and in turn to drive all this to come back to essentially translate into better clinical care for our kids. Uh, so that was a huge driving force. It, it really, uh, they're both very inspirational. So when we were looking at, when I was looking at where, what would be an ideal place to, to sort of try uh, to get better yourself so that you could translate that into better care for your patients, uh, Pittsburgh seemed like uh, the perfect place to, uh, to start over. Well, I, I, I'm glad you found Pittsburgh and I, I think I agree with everything that you, that, that brought you here and, and the, the, um, you know, the, what came to your decision with, with, with the team that we have here with the people that have been growing and as it relates to what you want to accomplish and you hope to accomplish for your patients um, who are, are dealing with these issues or are, 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 you know, pediatric uh, population of patients what do you see that we may be able to do here in Pittsburgh that that you know um, that really can you know can um, can really make a huge contribution for uh, you know for the future of of parents and kids with these these particular problems? Um, I think, think, like I said, because CHP is is such a unique place because we have uh, we truly have the potential to establish teams, truly teams, which can work together to better clinical care. I think coming up with um, dedicated clinics for these patients, for example, a CVI clinic, um, uh, even an nystagmus clinic, which, which I'm trying to establish and run um, at CHP right now. Nystagmus, I know I didn't mention, is, is a condition where there are abnormal eye movements, mm -hmm. uh, which could be to multiple causes. So things like that, where we can have dedicated uh, time, uh, dedicated place, and uh, where a team which comprises of clinical and paraclinical professionals can look at these children, offer them care based off on our research, based on things that we have done with science backing that up, uh, to then translate that into clinical care for, for these kids. So it's like a one-stop uh, where we can truly offer the best uh, care under one roof in one place. So that's, that's the long-term goal. That's really what, where we want to get. Yeah, very exciting, very exciting overall in terms of what you hope to do and also exciting what you've all already done. Um, so I, I'm really had a, I'm glad we had a chance to do this today and, and I um, look forward to more opportunities and particularly we'll be talking, of course, about some of the things that you're working on um, as uh, you know, we, we've been supporting some of those things related to the, the cortical visual impairment. Again, really important problem to, to tackle and hopefully that we can make an impact. So thank you. Thank you for your time today. And, um, and uh, we look forward to more opportunities in the future. Yeah, thank you again for having me.